2024 position previews are here. Catchers up first on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FPT in 5 on Monday, February 5th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White, and let's get into catcher preview, Scott. And first up, our strategy. How do you feel about the catcher position entering 2024, and what is your strategy in a one-catcher versus a two-catcher league this year? I feel amazing about catcher entering 2024. Better than I've ever felt about the position. In fact, there have been there has been such an infusion of talent over the past couple of years, and it's continuing. I mean, some of the ones we were most excited about as prospects haven't really fully integrated themselves yet. In my mind, there are 17 catchers that I feel comfortable having as my starter, uh, and that's more than enough to go around in a one catcher league. Obviously, so in a one catcher league, I'm waiting till almost my very last pick to take one because. Of those 17 aren't all going to be depleted. And I don't think investing in a higher end one is necessarily going to have the payoff that it might have in years past. And two catcher leagues, you know, because some people are going to want two of those top 17, you can't afford to wait quite so long. I don't think it's the end of the world if you get shut out of that top 17 because there are still some decent options after that. But I'd like to get at least one. Uh, still, I'm willing to wait pretty late to take him. All right, Scott, give me a sleeper at the catcher position that you like this year. I like Luis Campusano. He's the 17th of those 17 in my rankings and by ADP, but he's expected to take over as the starter for the Padres. Got some time down the stretch last year. Great minor league numbers. Repeated AAA the last few years and hit well over 300 in his chance last year. So I think he's beyond prepared for this opportunity. And even with the, the small track record, I'd be willing to take him as a starter. Luis Campusano, 257.2 ADP as the 17th catcher off the board, as you mentioned, Scott. For me, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm taking Henry Davis, who was drafted first overall as a catcher by the Pirates a couple of years ago. He only played in the outfield last year, but due to uh, injuries and current circumstances, it seems like Henry Davis could play catcher early on this season and gain that catcher eligibility. I like him as a post-hype sleeper who, uh, again, hopefully will... Uh, get that catcher eligibility in fantasy. He's got a breakout at the position. I'm going with Bo Naylor of the Cleveland Guardians, who had good power speed numbers in the minors, distinguished himself from ca other catchers in that way, but also really good plate discipline in terms of walks and strikeouts. And in his final 28 games with the Big Club last year, Bo Naylor hit 321 with seven homers, four steals, and an a 1113 OPS, as many walks as strikeouts during that 28 game stretch. Bo Naylor is currently going at pick 207.6 as the 14th catcher off the board. Breakout for me is going to be Logan O'Hoppy of the Angels, who last year hit 14 home runs in just 51 games. He dealt with a shoulder injury, which forced him to miss a lot of the year, but he hits the ball hard, uh, nearly 16% barrel rate, ranked as one of the best in all of baseball. And I do like the fact that Otani is no longer on the Angels because it means that more other players could potentially DH. So looking at Logan Ohapi as a breakout, as the 15th catcher off the board, 210.6 is the ADP. Scott, a bust, a catcher you will be avoiding this year. Well, JT Real Muto is going to be 33 this year. Salvador Perez is going to be 34. Both are beating the odds for continuing to deliver high-end fantasy results into their 30s, and that's crazy because they both have a lot of mileage on them. I could call either of them busts. I, 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 I'm i more confident, I guess, saying it about Salvador Perez because they have a good backup there in Kansas City and, and Freddie Furman, who already was bumping Salvador Perez to DH and even first base sometimes more often than we're used to seeing. Career low 91 appearances for Perez at catcher last year. It's not a great defensive catcher anymore, and... I think there's a scenario where his bat is no longer so essential to the Royals lineup that he's he's not automatically at DH at first base on the days he's not catching, in which case if he's not getting that playing time advantage, things could spiral. Uh, things could un unravel quickly for him in fantasy. Yeah, so the ADP for uh, Rio Muto is 69.2 as the third catcher off the board. Salvador Perez, who you also mentioned, the ADP is 138 as the seventh catcher off the board. 
A bus for me, Scott. Cover your ears. Maybe go for a walk while I uh, name this player. Yainer Diaz of the Astros. He did some really interesting things last year, for sure. Has some pop, hit for batting average. Obviously plays for a great team. But what I worry about is the plate discipline. He chased pitches outside the strike zone 46% of the time. And I do look at that as maybe an area that opposing pitchers can uh, attack Yiner Diaz this upcoming season. He's currently going as the fifth catcher off the board to 122.4 is the ADP. It's a decent opportunity cost. I understand what people like about him, but I do worry about that plate discipline. Uh, Yiner Diaz, someone I will be avoiding at his current cost. Speaking of cost, Scott, who is your favorite catcher to draft based on ADP? It's Mitch Garver, who in the past, his offensive potential was undermined by injuries and an unwillingness to play him behind the plate. The Rangers fixed both of those issues by playing him at DH full-time down the stretch. From August 1st on, he was the third best catcher in fantasy. It's going to be a full-time DH for Seattle this year. Favorite catcher for me to draft is going to be Wilson Contreras, who is currently the 10th catcher off the board, 153.6 is the ADP. He's been uh, incredibly consistent over the past couple years. You look up at the end of the year, he hits 260, 20-plus home runs. We'll chip in five or six steals. The stat cast numbers still look really good. I'll give you a hot take, a bold prediction. Wilson Contreras outperforms his brother, William Contreras, uh, currently going 80 picks later. So I do like uh, the value that we're getting here on Wilson Contreras. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.